Change and adversity. We're right in the thick of it. Or shall I say, it has only just begun. This is Deborah Peters. I would like to share with you a series of tools through videos and writings and postings and messages over the coming weeks and ideally help you in any way I can be of service to you, your relationships, your business, especially your business, because as we go through this um, pandemic hardship, I will call it, uh, we have to really learn to, to pivot our thinking, our emotional state, our consciousness, and the complete way that we approach business. This began for me uh, last week when I started feeling and taking on the fear that was going on in the media with my clients in their mindset and it was really starting to affect me. So I took some time to realign myself, which I highly recommend that everyone does this, and to make some very significant shifts in your lifestyle that enable you to navigate change. I say that because I've been through some really dark times helping my clients, or shall I say, I've been through some times helping my clients navigate some dark times with 9-11 and then with 2008 and the financial crash. It's been an interesting journey working with companies around the world the last 20 years and going through these experiences, the highs and the lows, and helping them pivot their mindset, their emotional state, their business models. And this is what's being required of us now. Essentially, what's happening with the pandemic is we're seeing that a lot of our old systems really don't work. And I'm not going to get into in this video specifics around that. I thought that in this initial video, I would introduce some techniques and some tools to help you put things into practice immediately on a daily basis that will help you be more at peace with what it is that you're experiencing and going through. There's an old saying in uh, spirituality, for lack of a better term, I call it consciousness, you know, where we either go through change kicking and screaming or we become agents of change and we direct the change that we are experiencing. This is a really big shift in angles in terms of perspectives and how you look at your life and how you look at your business and how you look at the economy. So I also have a tendency to, to think that when there's an economic downturn, the, one of the biggest contributors to that besides the media and all of their blowing things out of proportion and oversaturating our nervous system with repetitive messaging that's just put on autoplay, which is another conversation, but it happens, you know, there's, there's always the event and then there's the story about the event and the story we tell ourselves about the event and then the story we keep telling others about the event. And it just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds until it inundates our nervous system to the point of crashing. And right now, what you really need to navigate this is to get yourself grounded 
get yourself centered and get yourself focused on creating pivots in your business model, in your strategic plan, in your messaging to your employees, stakeholders, and to the world as to what you're all about and what your company is all about because the old way of running your business probably isn't ever, ever going to apply or work again. So in this video, I'd like to just give you some really solid, grounded, fun fundamental steps that you can put into play immediately. And you can share these with your team and have them start implementing it too because the more peaceful you are in your energy, the more you become a leader the more sovereign you are in your energy, people sense that, people feel that, people, people know, you know who they can move toward for guidance, for support, for just knowing that that person holds the space of possibility and success and resourcefulness and those that are in this sort of helter-skelter kind of energy that you know are looking at someone else for the answers. So I thought, what a better time for me to truly step up and be of service to you and your business, you and your relationships, especially the relationship that you have with yourself, and to really truly stand in a leadership role and hold the space for success, hold the space for thriving, and hold the space for, yes, this is a change process, and you can do this. You absolutely can do this. It doesn't have to mean that you lose everything or that you end up destitute. It doesn't have to mean that. So what's the first thing that you can do to get yourself into a place of being solid, being, I like that word sovereign, being possibility, being resourceful? Number one thing is to start with a morning routine. If you don't have one already, create one and there's a whole video on my youtube channel about what my morning routine and what my weekly routine is and it works it's so powerful it enables me as a coach to stay above the fray even if there's not a pandemic and uh, you know it enables me to see what my clients can't see and then to guide them to it and through it into thriving, into profitability, into giving back, into fulfillment, into paying it forward. And all of these philosophical kinds of concepts that actually enable thriving for everyone that's involved. Something I learned when I first took my very first training in NLP was that everything as an NLP expert, master trainer, everything that I do needs to increase choice for those whom I'm engaged with. So if my dialogue decreases choice, I have to up level my dialogue. If my service decreases their choices, I need to up level my offerings. And this is something that I've built my entire business on. So I would like you to consider how the way you're approaching your business, if it increases choice for your customers, for your clients, for the market, for the world, for the planet, this is a pivot right here that I believe is what we're being asked to put our attention on. Now that 
could mean a lot of different things depending on the size of your organization. If you're an entrepreneur, it might look, it will look very different than if you're a multinational company. The thing is, is that being in that pivot point is really key right now because yes, the way you've been doing things is not working. That doesn't mean you have to stop being or doing, it just means you need to pivot your perspective, your point of view, your vision, what drives that vision, and the values that live and breathe behind the vision. That is the key. So we're getting down to some real fundamental foundation building concepts here. So in that morning routine, it really is about getting into alignment with you. Do yourself a favor and shut off the news for a while, or at least don't listen to it nonstop all day long. If you want to take a moment and get updates, then shut it off again. That would be my advice to you so that you're not constantly bombarding your nervous system with endless negativity and fear-based messaging because that has an effect on your consciousness. Look, here's how it works. We create patterns in our nervous system, in our neurology, through our neurotransmitters, which are part of our brain syndicate. And especially the hippocampus is responsible for duplicating our thought patterns. Three, seven, or 21 repetitions create a new pattern. If you're bombarding your nervous system with negative messages over and over and over, you're actually creating a new pattern of fear, fearful thinking, lack, limitation, failure, scarcity, loss. It just, the list goes on and on. And that actually, if you want to know the biggest way to get ill is to do that to yourself because it drives down your immune system. Nothing drives down an immune system faster than paranoia and fear, fear-based thinking. So creating uh, happy thoughts obviously might be a bit of a stretch, but at the very least, start to cultivate a relationship with yourself where you can get your ego out of the way because linear, logical, ego-based thinking is not going to be the answer to how you pivot your organization during these times. It has to come from a, a higher place. I call it alignment. I call it consciousness. Some people call it spirit. I believe it's time to bring the spirit back to business. Why are you doing what you do? What gets you out of bed every day to go and do what you do? What's important to you about what you're contributing to your team, to your clients, to your company, to, to, the, to the earth? You know, what are we really doing here? And it's worth asking yourself these kinds of questions because I would bet for most people, this isn't something that's been on their mind very often, if ever. You know, we've been programmed and conditioned that you, you go through school and you look at the marketplace and you see what the top paying careers are. You go get yourself a degree in one of those and then you jump in and you start doing all of the things you've been taught are the norm getting married, having children, buying homes, buying vacation homes, going on vacation, having the right label on your clothes, having the right brand model of car, having the right zip code, rubbing elbows with the right people. And there's every time there's a rightness to something, the polarity of that is there's a wrongness. So 
when you're going after being right, looking right, posturing yourself right, saying all the right things, hanging out with all the right people, being seen with the right people, then the antithesis of that is there's some part of yourself that you feel is wrong if you're not jumping through those hoops and making all that effort to look right. So, you know, we're really moving past that and it's time to get your company into a pivot that has more of a connection to your values and what you're creating and who you're leading and how you're leading them to what? What are you leading them to? And that's a values-based question. So I found in coaching businesses in 17 countries for over 20 years that for the leaders to cultivate a morning routine where they spend 15 minutes meditating. I'm not asking you to go sit on a mountain for days. Sit in your chair in your living room while your family's still asleep and your phone is off and turn on a fan and just let yourself zone out for 15 minutes and clear your mind of all chatter and especially clear your mind of regurgitating what took place yesterday. So what you're able to do then is you're able to connect into your higher mind, which has the ability to guide you and navigate you through any kind of adversity. Where do you think the GPS came from? We have internal GPSs. That's how we're wired as human beings. I can tell you a story. In fact, I'm going to tell you a story about a time I was in London and I rented a car. I rented a car from the Marble Arch area of town. I was staying around Covent Garden and I went down to Marble Arch. I picked up a car and I drove out into the English countryside without a map. There was no GPS at the time, and I think it was like 2004 or something. There was no GPS, and I listened to my inner GPS, and it guided me where all the places that were in my unconscious mind that I'd always wanted to go and see. I stayed out there till midnight. I actually kind of hung out at Stonehenge and just really enjoyed the full moon and the beautiful sky and being in the countryside. But then I had to navigate myself back into London without any sort of guidance. And I literally would get to a stoplight or a roundabout and I would say, okay, do I go left? Do I go right? Do I go straight? And I, I had to trust. I had to trust because the rental agency was closed. There was nobody to call. You know, what's interesting is I, I, I navigated myself back really easily. And what's interesting is I didn't navigate myself back to the car rental place at the Marble Arch, but instead I navigated myself to the car rental branch of the same company, same brand, that was at the end of the block where my hotel was. They didn't have any cars, so that's why I ended up going to a different location and found the parkade. So if you don't believe you have internal guidance, I want to invite you to practice it. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to take my word for it. If you're watching this right now and you're rolling your eyes and you think I'm this lunatic, crazy person, then you are going to get pulled into a whole lot more negativity because I'm sharing with you from the heart here and I'm giving you some real tangible solid tools that are going to enable you to be the rock star in your company and to navigate what we're experiencing right now and into the future that you're able to take your business through this without a bunch of bruises and scars and upheaval and to actually create a thriving pivot.
because that's really what we're being asked to do here. And that starts with your mindset. So take some time in the morning, sit down, meditate, get something next to you that you can do some writing in, write down your intentions, write down your goals and your objectives for the week and the day, and then, then come forward, then come forward into your day and share that person with your clients and with your team. The other thing I would suggest to you is after you do that writing or while you're doing the writing, you can close your eyes for a moment or two and you can get into the feeling of what it is going to feel like when you have that outcome. You see, it's not enough to visualize. You have to feel it. Visualization is really powerful, yes. And if you want to ramp that up exponentially and make it even so powerful that things start to really pop open in a positive way for you and your team, then you add the feeling into that. And here's why. You see, we are sensory-based human beings. We live our lives through our sensory acuity. We see things, we hear things, we feel things, both tactile, meaning touch, and also intuitively and we we taste things we smell things we are we are filtering all of life through our senses all of the time and when you get aware of that then you're in a place of power if you're just flailing about and you're reacting and you're you know you're trying to put a band-aid over a problem in your business and yet you're not really shifting and connecting into yourself, then you know it's just not gonna work. It just isn't going to work anymore. I recommend you take this and you share this video with your team and you have your team sit down together, even if it's virtually. You know, there's a lot of really good high quality virtual meeting platforms and software that's available these days there's absolutely no excuse not to do this and you could do a group 15 minute meditation and intention setting exercise and write things down and get into the feeling of success get into the feeling of thriving get into the feeling of resourceful thinking because that is the exact opposite of what you've been doing if you're all commiserating and sitting around and looking at the news and talking about how bad things are you're already in the feeling of fear you're already doing the exercise i just described to you only it's a negative downward spiral instead of the positive expansive upward spiral that i'm teaching you so you don't have to take my word for it. Do it. Try it. I challenge you. I challenge you to do this every day with your team for the rest of this month and then circle back with me and let me know what kind of experiences that you're having. Because I promise you, you will see an uptick in happiness, in fulfillment, in, in vibrancy, in resourceful thinking, in clarity of mind. In a, in a sense of peacefulness in your heart. Stick together, people. Stick together. Be kind to one another. When someone is challenged, be kind. Be a leader. Don't let this push your buttons. Leaders, don't let anyone see themselves fall apart because they don't fall apart. They step up and they focus on what it is that they are creating. So be a leader, be positive, be the one that shines the light of possibility. Be like the sun, be like the sun, and shine a light for people to follow you in what it is that you're creating and your possibility thinking. Stay loving, stay kind, put a smile on your face, and if you go out and if you're interacting with people, look people in the eye, smile at them, say hello. How awesome would it be 
to just connect with people you've never connected with before because you're being a leader and you're shining that light of love and acceptance and possibility thinking. So that's the beginning. This is the journey I'm taking you on. Share this with your tribe. Definitely subscribe to my channel and let's navigate this together. What else is possible?